Hey guys, this is Jerry Brewer, and today I want to talk about the lead foot. There's been a lot of chatter about it going around, you know, um, a lot of discussion about it, which is really good. Um, I read a really good post by Derek, um, Saber Coach, you know, talking about how guys let the foot go, you know, don't be so confined to landing clothes, and that's really cool. I also want to add to this and give it some, some thoughts on, uh, on what I see and, and what I think hitters should do to, to see the most improvement. Okay, so what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about the lead foot and so by now we pretty much all know that guys land open close all over the place here's Donaldson you know he's wide open we've seen Batista he's wide open but you'll see other guys you'll see a Josh Hamilton you know he's kind of at a 45 maybe 50 degrees um, you'll see Jonathan Lucroy you know he's the same thing you know 50 55 degrees but then you'll see other guys on the other end of the spectrum how about a Michael Brantley you know, pretty much completely closed. You know, maybe 20 degrees of, of a, a foot angle, and then finally, like a Chase Utley, same thing. I would say maybe even 10 degrees. So what's going on? You know, you know which is better. You know, what's right, if you will. What should we teach? What should we do? Well, let's look at some factors about this. Okay. <coughs> you know, what determines the, this angle of this lead foot? And I think a, a really important thing is timing of the pitch. You know, whether you're swinging on a fastball, you're going to get that the hips going a lot faster in this as opposed to if you have to waiting on an off-speed pitch. So just throwing up a photo and saying, "Hey, this guy lands closed." I mean, just just be careful of that. But I mean, you know, the rest of these points are, are really what I'm going to talk about today. I think the, the biggest things is that there's individual differences for each hitter that kind of drive what that foot should be doing. And, and some of those, those those factors are your hip angles. Just how your 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 hip structures are, you know how your pelvis is is, is made, how God made you, you know uh, range of motion. I'm be talking about that. You know, do you have a ton of motion? Do you have not as much motion as you need? That's going to factor in. And just plain old, you know, how loose are you? Do you have um, long muscles? You know, do you have some laxity and, and looseness just in your knee or in your ankle? That can give you degrees of um, degrees in your foot angle that other guys aren't going to be able to achieve. So there's a lot of variables, and they're all really individualized to you, okay? So let me go over a couple of these. <coughs> you know, one I want to talk about this hip angle I think is very important, okay? And so, you know, this is just, you know, basically the way your pelvis is built. You know, on the left we have this normal hip. So for his foot alignment, you know, he's in neutral. But on the, you can see the guy in the middle, you know, he's antiverted. You know, basically he's pigeon-toed, all right? And then on the left you'll see... Um, retroversion. This is a little bit more common in the baseball population. So he's kind of got the duck footed or he's towed out. And so what's important to realize is, you know, if these three guys are on a team and the head coach walks up and says, hey, I averaged every single MLB hitter foot angle. It's 42 and a half degrees. That's all what we're going to do. You can see that, you know, if these, all, these guys all do that angle, it's going to mean a lot different to them. It's going to mean this guy's going to have a certain hip angle, this guy's going to have a certain hip angle, this guy's going to have a certain different hip angle. They're all going to have the same foot angle, but the hips, which is really important, you know, is, is going to be a, a lot different. And, it, you know, in taking this to the extreme, you know, saying guys should land closed, you know, if you look at this retroverted guy, I mean, that's asking an lot, awful lot for him to land closed. And the same thing, you say, hey, Donaldson Batista land open, you should land open. Well, this antiverted guy, you know, that, that's a tough pill to swallow as well because he's going to have to take his entire body open to get into that position. All right. <coughs> you know, there can be other things. You know, this could present as a, as a bony thing. It also could be range of motion. You know, guys could have, you know, limited internal rotation, especially if you throw right-handed and hit right-handed. I mean, you are a strong candidate for having lacking lead hip internal rotation. I fall in that category. You know, for a long time, I was trying to correct something in my swing, trying to figure this out to said, hey, I have, uh, you know, a lack of internal rotation. A lot of guys do, okay? So, all right, I just went through a lot of things here. We said, hey, the foot is not really a great metric. You know, uh, I don't even, it's not even really something I look at. So what do we want to look at? You know, what, what's important? And instead of just looking at heel plant, <coughs> why don't we back it up a couple frames to right when the foot's about to come down, Okay. And what we see is Donaldson's in this position where the front leg is turned in a little bit. You know, he's he's got a little bit of coil if we wear his hips are closed, and he's in a really strong position. All right, and from here, he's going to open that leg quite a bit and get into a, a really open angle. 
Um, some time back, I asked Donaldson over Twitter about this. You know, what are you trying to do in this? In this, he said, I'm trying to open my front leg as much as possible as my foot is coming down. You know, not while my foot is striding way up in the air, but as my foot is coming down, I'm going to try to open that leg as much as possible. Okay, and I think that's a really good idea. I mean, that's a really good cue. That's a really good <coughs> thing for Donaldson to think about. You know, looking at Donaldson. I'm gonna kind of internet diagnose him. I'd say he's more of a loose guy. I think he's he falls more on the mobile on the mobile side of the spectrum. You know, I would say that he needs to open this foot this much to kind of keep his body taut. You know, he he kind of is a free mover, so he needs to really get this leg going to kind of bring the rest of his body with him. All right, you know, say how do you know that, Jerry? Well, I mean, looking at his his contact point, he gets you know quite a bit of extension in that knee. So I'm kind of guessing this, but just watching him play for a while, you can kind of tell he's a, he's a free mover. So, you know, if you were to say, hey, Donaldson, man, you need, you need to square up this front foot, that wouldn't be a good thing for him. I think that would, be a lim that would limit his performance. All right. This is an important position I want to point out. Okay. So let's hop over to Utley. Same thing. You know, he's coming into in his front landing. He's got this good hip, uh, hip coil, front leg turned in. All right, same position as Donaldson. This is what we're looking for, okay? This is the good metric. But let's watch him. You know, he is going to open his front foot, his front leg, some, but not that much, okay? And so do we need to say, hey, Utley, you know, what's up with that, man? You know, Bautista and, and Donaldson open it a ton. Get it, get it going, dude. What are you saying? Well, I mean, just watching this guy... I mean, he he doesn't move that way. He he's I would say he's more on the stable side. You know, less uh, mobile than than uh, uh, than Donaldson. You know, asking him to land more open is probably not a good idea. You know, he's he's probably a little bit more stiff, not in a bad way, in a, in a perhaps a good way. And this is plenty of range of motion for him. And you know, he's able to get a good hip turn. You know, he doesn't have to get quite so high, he doesn't get quite so hyperextended. So, <coughs> you know, am am I gonna say Utley? You need to open this foot up. Absolutely not. You know this is a, is a very successful thing for him. He's achieved a lot of success. So, you know, I'm not going to ask him to do something that his body doesn't need to do, and which is not optimal for his body. Okay. So we've seen two different types of guys. You know, both ends of the spectrums. You know, so how do we how do we figure this out? How do we coach this? If you're a hitter, how do you figure out what's right for you? All right. Get an assessment. Uh, for God's sakes, people. You know, for in this day and age with motion sensors and TrackMan and this and that. It blows my mind that guys don't get a quick assessment to figure out what they are. You know, find out what's neutral for you. Do you have any retroversion? Do you have any antiversion? <coughs> Do you have any um, range of motion deficits? Are you lax? Are you stiff? You know, figure out all this stuff. Work on anything. If you have lead hip internal rotation deficit and you can't get into that coil position without, you know, crappy um, compensation patterns, work on it. You know, it's a limiting factor in your swing. You know, figure these things out. All right, and then figure out what's right for you. And you know, if, if you're more stiff, if if you don't move that well, if you know, if you don't have just a, a, a tremendous amount of rotator, uh, range of motion in the hip, do not try to do Donaldson stride. It's just not going to work. You're you're going to just break it down. Um, same thing. You know, even if he's your favorite hitter, you know, there's this there's this really powerful movement right now to model your swing after an MLB hitter, and I think that's a great thing. I do it all the time, but for this one, you have to be very very careful. You know, if you're a guy who moves like Utley, who doesn't have a lot of <coughs> uh, range of motion, I'm not saying he doesn't, I'm just speculating for your sake. If you don't have a lot of range of motion and you're trying to do Donaldson's stride, just because he's your favorite hitter or just because he's helping us on Twitter, I mean, that's just not going to work. So and this one is really N equals 1. Figuring out, figuring out what your body does, figuring out how you move, work on any deficiencies, and incorporate the right stride for you. All right? It's really, really important. I think that's what I'm trying to get across is don't just look at your foot angle and say, oh, my foot angle is 55 and his is, you know, 85 or whatever. I don't even know. I don't even look at foot angles. You know, figure out what's best for you and incorporate that into your swing. Work on any deficiencies. It'll improve your swing without even hitting balls. All right? <coughs> so that's what I got, guys. Figure out what's going on and incorporate it and improve. And uh, don't worry so much about that front foot.